Hi everyone, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is November 14th and our devotion is titled Purpose to My Pain from Psalm 138 verse 8. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning and thank you for your never-ending love. We thank you, Father, that your purpose is being fulfilled in our lives and that, Lord, today you're going to give us that reassurance that we're in your hand, that we're safe and protected by you as you turn us into the image of Christ. I ask, Holy Spirit, for your anointing today that you would help me to teach your word in Jesus' name, amen. Life often doesn't turn out the way we think it should. When we're stuck in the midst of circumstances we never wanted, dreams lost and hope buried, it's difficult to find meaning in it all. And it can seem impossible to keep going. But God gives a purpose to our pain and hope to carry on. When it feels a lot more like we're surviving in Him rather than actively abiding in Him, he comforts us with the promise that he will complete the work he began in us, making all things beautiful in his time. We have the blessing of embracing all that is going on in our lives as part of his trustworthy plan to glorify himself and to accomplish his loving intentions for us. Mm, praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's hard sometimes, huh, guys? But I want you to remember that God never starts anything that he doesn't finish. It's not in his character. Let's turn over to Philippians. Chapter 1. And we're going to go to verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. As you can see here, he will finish the work he's begun in you and I. And we have to remember that our Father, he has a purpose and a plan in everything he does in our lives. For each of us, his ultimate purpose is that we bear the image of his dear son, Jesus. Let's go over to Romans chapter 8 <clears throat> and we're going to go to verse 29 for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And let's go over to 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So we see here in the word that the Lord has a purpose. He has a plan for each one of us. Now he has a different plan or path for every person to travel, of course. But all those paths come together and they create this tapestry of life that we're all seeing played out day by day. Since the beginning, his story's been being lived out through his creation. And ultimately, each individual life is tied to the next in completing his greater purpose for the world. If you're a child of God, consider everything you experience as an opportunity to fill, fulfill his purpose for the ultimate coming of the kingdom of God. And now within that tapestry, there's going to be times of great joy and peace and prosperity. However, we're also going to experience things in our lives that make us question God. 
times of discomfort, sickness, and even trauma. In those moments, we may not initially understand the reasons behind those uncomfortable situations that we're going through. And we need to remember that life is filled with circumstances that are out of our control. And also there are those circumstances that are within our control. And the consequences we experience from those things that were either out of our control or in our control can, well, they can bring us to those moments of discomfort. But I have to tell you, I don't believe that we ever go through anything in this life, at least not as a believer in Christ, that isn't filtered through God's grace. Sometimes we may experience something that God will just seemingly reach right into and stop it before it causes us any pain or even sometimes our possible demise. How many times have you almost been in a car accident or <clears throat> I've had moments where I was almost shot, I was robbed, and I had two moments like that in my life where God just reached in and said, no. Nope. And when those situations occur, I don't believe that those circumstances would have served a purpose toward the greater good of making us more like Christ. And therefore, our Father stopped it in its tracks. And then there are those situations that happen to us that are completely out of our control. And sometimes they're absolutely life-altering. And we stand in the wake of those times and we wonder why. We may cry out to God or we may have matured enough that we trust Him without many questions. But either way, I can promise you the Lord doesn't allow those situations to take place or have any lasting power in his child's life unless it's taking us to the greater good of making us in the image of his son. When we find ourselves in one of these situations, we need to surrender our control of it over to him and allow our father to handle the outcome. I promise it'll be for your good. And then... I believe the most difficult times we find ourselves in are those we had control of. These are those times when we could have made better choices. We could have chosen not to go where we shouldn't be or not to spend the money on certain items, you know, that we really didn't need or take better care of ourselves and we would have been healthier. And now we suffer the consequences that we don't really enjoy. Now, God's mercy is there for us in those times as well and his forgiveness we may still have to suffer some consequences, but if we confess our sin, we're forgiven and we're free from condemnation. However, we do have to trust the Lord to take us through that situation and allow Him as our Father to determine how we will walk through that season. It's in His timing, it's in His will and His purpose that we'll see, it, well, that we'll see an end to it. I believe it's important for us to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal in each one of us which situation we're in. And if He reveals that we are where we are because of choices that we made, then we need to repent and allow the Lord to lead us out of the valley of our own making. Let's pray. Father God, we believe you're molding us more into the image of Jesus through the painful circumstances in our lives. Lord, we hope and trust in your promise that you will fulfill your purpose in each one of us today. That, Lord, we will walk with patience and trust, humility toward you, knowing that you know best for each one of us. And that if our situation doesn't look like our neighbor's situation, that that's okay. That's right. Because we're not going to go through the same things somebody else is going through exactly the same way they went through it. We can't compare ourselves to ourselves. We need to trust in you to take us through every single circumstance in life. And know that the path you've chosen for us is the one that's going to lead us to becoming more like Jesus. That is the path that's best for us because it's the one you chose. I pray that you'd help us, Lord, not to rebel against you, not to be stiff-necked and stubborn against the Holy Spirit's guidance, but that we would listen to him, that we would listen to his instruction, that we would receive your wisdom every day, and that we would walk in discernment because we're listening to the Holy Spirit. 
We thank you, Father, and we give you all praise and glory for this devotion and for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with me again. And I hope you guys are having a great week. And I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.